Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Loving Little Learners. I wanted to make a quick video for you guys showing you all of the things that you may not know about Seesaw. These are some things that I did not know personally about Seesaw myself until I became a Seesaw ambassador. So now that I know, I want to share all of these cool features with you. Stay tuned. If you're currently using the free version of Seesaw, you can trial Seesaw Plus for free for 60 days. Here's how. Come over to your name in the top left corner, click on the gears icon, choose account setting, scroll down, and under Seesaw Plus tab, there's a green button that says try Seesaw Plus for free. Click. Then it's going to tell you what are the differences between Seesaw free and the premium subscription. Um, and this blue button is how you can start your 60 day free trial. If you're an active user of Seesaw, you have the opportunity to apply to become a Seesaw ambassador. This is really fun and it's really easy to do. All you would do is go into your homepage, click over here on your name, click on your gear button, and then account settings. From here, you're gonna scroll down and it says apply to become a Seesaw ambassador. Click here and then you're gonna start the application process. It is going to ask you a couple of questions about how you use Seesaw, why you um, think that you would become you would like to become an ambassador, um, and a couple of different questions about that. The main perk that you get with becoming a Seesaw Ambassador is that you have the um, access to Seesaw Plus for free. All you need to do is complete a training as well as conduct one sort of PD once a year. And so that could be even like a one-on-one -on -one with a new teacher, a grade level PD, a school wide PD, a district PD, whichever you like from as small as you want to as big as you want. But you would have to basically do your part in sharing um, Seesaw with others and joining them to our Seesaw team. If you're using Seesaw for distance learning, it may be hard to pass out your home learning codes through these options here when you only wanna pass out a code to one specific student. So I have found a way where you can pass out your login information to just one student. You'll come over here on the right hand side to this wrench icon, click, and then you're gonna scroll down under the students tab and go to manage students. From here, you're gonna choose whichever student it is that you want your login information for or the home learning code for and click. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of this list, it says home learning student code. Here is where you can download a PDF for that single student's home learning code. It will open you up to a PDF and this is just a one page. So if you would like to download this code for just the single student, this will be easier to pass out this one page to that family rather than having to screenshot or save each page individually. If I go back out, I can also follow the step, same steps to get to this portion. This says need to reset the student's home learning code. And I would click here if for some reason my learning code was corrupted for some reason. Um, that could be if it got into the hands of somebody it wasn't supposed to because these are technically passwords for your students. So if that happened, you would want to reset their code and all previous codes that you have given them are now invalid and it will start fresh once you press on this button. Seesaw has an option for you to start your own classroom blog. You would do that by coming to the right hand corner and pressing the wrench. You'll scroll down and there is an area that says class blog. You'll toggle this on and more options will pop up. You have the option that students can post their own work that they'd like to share to the class blog. You can toggle this on or off and blog settings. Let's click here. So there's a couple of different settings. One, if you want to show your folders on your class blog, and two, 
enable comments on the class blog. So this is if you want your students to be able to comment to each other, which I think is a really great feature, especially for this home learning experience. Um, next is password protected class blog. Do you want your students and families to have to know a password to access the information that you are gonna be posting on your class blog? So those are all optional for your personal preferences. If you come back over, you have an option for blog appearance. So this is where you will name your blog, give it a specific URL, and describe your blog. You can also put a picture to customize it. I like to put a picture of my students there. Let's see. Um, if you go back to the back area, you can view what your blog looks like, or you can connect other classrooms blogs to your own. So those are all options for class blog. I also wanted to mention this because during um, the home learning experience with our home learning codes activated, students are now not able to see each other's work. If you really do want your students to continue interacting with each other, a class blog is the way around this um, setup. So enable your class blog if you want your students to still continue to interact in a classroom environment, um, in a virtual classroom environment. If you did enable your classroom blog, you'll now see it as a tab over here on the right hand corner of your screen. So this is going to show you how many items each student has posted to your blog. Um, let me go to inside of the blog. Okay, so this is just my tra my training class blog. So there's not a lot in here, but this is what the blog would look like. You would have a class list. Your students would see a list and see how many items each of their friends have posted. They can also go here and comment on the item that they that they've submitted or that their classmates have submitted. Um, and they can also choose this calendar to see when different items were submitted. Over here, if you chose to leave a description, it will come up here. I put in my description how much I miss my students and how much I um, hope that they utilize this class blog to stay in touch with one another. It is very easy to share an activity that you either make yourself or have found in the activities library with a colleague or a friend. So this is how you would do that. You would come over to your activities tab and scroll down to your library. From here, I'm gonna choose my library or you can go from the community library and choose the activity that you would like to share. You're gonna come over and they have three dots on the bottom right corner. Click on it and scroll all the way down to share activity. Once you do this, you have a couple of options. As a Seesaw ambassador, I'm able to share this activity to the library. Um, you can also choose to email teachers. This is really cool because when you click on this button, it's going to um, come up with a list of all of the emails that are connected to your specific school. So you can just choose and check all the way down the list of all of the teachers that you would like to share this activity with within your own school. So that makes it really easy to collaborate with your grade level and things like that. You can also choose to input your own email here. You can share it directly to many forms of social media, or you can get an activity link that you can share um, through Facebook, through email, whatever way you would like to, or you can get a code to embed it in a website or whatever type of platform you're using. Seesaw has a really cool feature, which is the Google Chrome extension. Um, what you would do is just come over to Google and type in Seesaw Chrome extension. Okay, from here, um, you can click on any of these ones that pop up. It's gonna take you directly to the page where if you didn't have it downloaded, it would go ahead and come up right here and you would click to start to install the Chrome extension straight to your computer. Um, some of the features of this extension are shown here. So it's when you press on the extension, it's gonna come up with two options, one to capture the visible area or capture the selected area of a document that you would like to input into Seesaw. 
you would simply just go ahead and select the portion of the document you'd like and you can use this um, for anything but they are using this here to annotate the text and you can see that with all of the drawing tools and the labeling tools that they're using in seesaw um, here is also a video that they will explain a little bit more about the features of this extension If you have multiple students at home using Seesaw, there is a way to not have to log them both in and out every single time you would like them to access their class. So if you're or if you're on a device like an iPad um, or a phone, what you can do is have one student log into the Seesaw class app and have the other student access their class through a web browser like um, Google Chrome or Safari. So those are two options if you're on a supported device. If you are just accessing Seesaw through a web browser on a computer, you can just choose to have a, a regular window open with Seesaw and then have an incognito or a private browser open for your next student. So these are ways to go about getting around um, having your students log in and out every single time they'd like to access their own class. If you are an administrator and you have Seesaw for Schools, you have the ability to get a student activity report. This is going to let you know how often your students are actually accessing Seesaw and completing their work, which is a really good feature for the home learning experience that we are all um, working towards. So what you would do, you would go into the admin tools section of your school dashboard and tap on get activity report. It's going to give you an Excel spreadsheet that is going to give you information like student name, ID, last sign in date and time, the class ID, class name, number of posts, and one day, seven days. Many different um, details and information that will come from that one report. Another feature for admin is that you have the ability to actually visit a classroom within your school, look over student work, and leave comments. Students are really excited when they here that they got complimented um, by their principals. So those are really great features to utilize if you're an admin and you have Seesaw for Schools. There are so many people now new to Seesaw or learning how to use Seesaw for home learning. And Seesaw is offering daily training and PD depending on what you need. So we have um, sessions for remote learning for teachers new to Seesaw. You can choose to register to join live, download the slides, or watch the recording after it has posted. They also have training sessions for teachers who are already using Seesaw, for admin, how to create your first activity, how to level up on activities for remote learning, and daily live questions and answers. So this can all be found um, if you type in web.seesaw.me forward slash training, and I will leave that information down below in the, in the description box. Um, this is what I have for some things that you may not have known about Seesaw. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I went over, please leave a comment and I'm happy to answer. Um, please also don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Loving Little Learners. Thank you for staying tuned.